Talking about the non-playable characters in Street Fighter V was a pretty great opportunity for me. My first video that I made that really kind of took off was the video on Peter, and since then I've talked about all of the non-playable characters that you fight in story mode, extra battle, such and such. However, some of you might have been thinking, how would these characters hypothetically stack up against each other? Well, wonder no more. All three of you. Because I've been giving that an embarrassing amount of thought, and I'm going to share with you today what is my personal tier list for the non-playable characters in Street Fighter V. Before we get into this, there's a few things I want to set straight. First off, no boss characters. That might be kind of disappointing, I know technically they're non-playable characters, but, you know, they're made with much different intent. Boss characters are designed to be strong, while the rest of them just kind of aren't, so they'd really fuck up what I've got going here with the tier list. Also, just some basic facts about the non-playable characters, so you don't wonder why I'm not bringing stuff up. None of them have any V system of any kind, no V skill, no V trigger, no V shift, nothing like that. None of the non-playable characters have a super, and three of them, the three golden EX soldiers, have no way of spending meter at all. They have no EX moves. So, now that that's cleared up, let's get into my personal tier list for the non-playable characters in Street Fighter V, starting with F tier. 2P is so much less than the bare minimum a character needs to be in Street Fighter V, it's actually kind of insane. Most non-playable characters get around 200 to 300 damage off a jump in. You want to know how much 2P gets? 3. Just 3. And yeah, that, that that's max damage. For some ungodly reason, all of 2P's normals, with one exception, do exactly one damage. The only tools this character has that do actual damage are his throw, his down forward heavy punch, and his tackle special move. That's it. And he can't combo into any of them without getting a stun. And good luck getting a stun, because on top of doing one damage, all of his punch normals do zero stun. I could talk about his other issues, like he's got low health and terrible mobility, but it just doesn't matter. He can't do anything. At all. 2P is the worst character in Street Fighter V by a massive margin, and he sits all by himself in F tier. ASD is the character 2P is actually based on, and he's pretty much just 2P, but he can actually do damage. Now, that's a pretty big upside, but this is nowhere near enough to make him a good or even close to good character. He's still terrible. He doesn't have any way to combo into his only special move, so his damage is still on the very low side. His survivability is pretty bad with only 500 health and 400 stun, and he shares 2P's awful mobility, having a very slow walk speed and an incredibly shitty jump that goes nowhere and takes a billion years to land. It says a lot that ASD is just 2P with his biggest issue fixed, and he's still this bad. ASD is going straight at the bottom of D tier. Peter is maybe the most notorious of the non-playable characters, and to be fair, he's actually got a few things going for him. For a start, he can actually combo a normal into a special move. Fucking great job. He can cancel standing medium punch into light or EX baton. He's also got one genuinely good normal in Jump Heavy Kick. This is really hard for a lot of the non-playable characters to deal with. A lot of the weaker non-playable characters don't have a consistent anti-air, including Peter, so they've really got to respect this. With that being said though, Peter is by no means a good character, not even close. He is the single most frail character in the entire game, having only 400 health and 400 stun. Meaning that eating a single jump in can often lead to a stun, or even death. Being so frail is also a problem when you don't have a consistent anti-air, because Peter cannot afford to take trades whatsoever. His best options for anti-airing are praying that crouching medium punch works, or trying to meet the opponent in the air. He's also got maybe the worst normals in the entire game. They either have awful frame data, terrible hitboxes, or both. His fastest button is his 5 frame crouching light kick, which is actually unsafe on block. His best button is probably his 7 frame standing light kick, which is honestly his best punish in way more situations than you'd like. Also, while he can combo into a meterless baton, if he does so and it doesn't stun or kill the opponent, he's minus 16 on hit, which is kind of insane. Peter is just about a character. He can kind of play the game, but he'll probably die trying. 
That being said, he's better than at the very least two characters, so I'll give him that. Next in D tier we have ASY, who is playing a very similar game to Peter, but I'd argue he plays it slightly better. For a start, he's slightly bulkier, having 425 health and 450 stun. His fastest button is still a 5 framer, but his normals on the whole are much better than Peter's, including a sweep that, while being very slow, can be spaced to make completely safe. His combo potential is overall slightly better than Peter's too. He can combo into his EX tackle from either standing or crouching medium punch, and he's the first character to actually have a combo going into a special move off a low. His counter hit crouching light kick can go into crouching medium punch into EX tackle. That being said, there are some things Peter does better than him. His damage output is overall slightly worse thanks to his incredibly weak grounded normals, with his lights doing 10 damage, mediums doing 30, and heavies only doing 50. Overall, I do think the character is better than Peter, although not by a massive margin. ASR is kind of an objectively better ASY, although I don't think he's that much better to where I'd put him a full tier above. Overall, he's pretty much the same character, except his survivability is much better thanks to 550 health and 500 stun, his damage is a smidge better due to slightly stronger grounded normals, and he's also got this new dive kick special move, which honestly isn't a big deal, it's fucking terrible. It's really slow, and even if perfectly spaced, it's at best minus 4 on block, but it's so slow, good luck doing that. Also, for some reason, unlike ASY, his sweep is just as slow, but it's not safe. It's pretty much always punishable. Overall though, he's the better character for sure, although not by much. Moving on to C tier, and we've got ASM. Unlike ASR, I do think ASM is a big step up from The Last Soldier. He's got some genuinely good traits. For a start, he's the first character on this list to have a consistent anti-air. He's got a DP, and the light version has invincibility against air attacks, which is genuinely nice. He's also the first character we've talked about to have a light confirm. He's got an interesting target combo, which is kind of unrewarding, not doing a ton of damage and leaving you minus two on hit, but it starts from light kick, and the second hit is zero on block, meaning you can pretty easily hit confirm it. These are decent traits, but I still don't think he's that great of a character. He shares ASR's shitty dive kick, which really doesn't do anything for the character. His frame data still isn't great, and while he does have a DP, it's probably the shittiest DP ever. None of them have any invincibility outside of the anti-air invincibility on the light DP. They have pitiful range, meaning it's very hard to combo into them, and they've got a ton of recovery. All of them leave you minus if the opponent quick rises. ASM is definitely a character, which is a lot more than I can say for some of the characters below him, but he's still nothing special. Next in C tier we have ASYEX, the first of the EX soldiers, and to be completely honest, this is the character I probably had the hardest time tearing. He's playing a bit of a different game to everyone else, and it's very hard to know how good his playstyle is. See, what you've got here is a character who on paper is kind of dog shit. He has some good traits, there's no way around it. Like, he's got grounded confirms, he has a 5 frame medium, all of his heavy buttons have frame 1 armor, which is genuinely quite nice. They make for, you know, a decent reversal option, uh, consistent anti-airs. However, he's effectively only got one special move, and while he can combo into it, if he does so, he's minus 18 if the opponent quick rises. Also, while his armored heavy buttons make for consistent anti-airs, they don't have very good hitboxes, meaning that he's typically going to take damage in the process, and he'll usually take more damage than he dishes out. However, while he's giving the opponent a ton of opportunities to deal damage to him, he can kind of afford to do that, because for some reason he's got 1,500 health with no downside to balance that out, unlike the other two characters who have that much health. So, he's sort of like a low-risk, low-reward character. He can just choose to not get punished on hit and end his combos early, but then his damage is very, very low, he's not going to break 200. It's, it, it, it's just so hard to know how good a character like this is. A shit character who can afford to be shit because of how much health they have? I will say though, I don't think it's that great of a strategy. For example, if his health ever gets low enough to where he can't really afford to take damage, then he has to play on the back foot really hard. He has to end all his combos early, get very low damage, and he has to kind of meet you in the air to anti-air, because outside of his armored buttons, he doesn't really have any kind of consistent anti-air. 
ASYEX is a really, really strange character, but overall, I don't think he's that great, even if he's pretty interesting. We're moving on to B tier now, and the way I see B tier is it's kind of like if you had these characters in a hypothetical tournament setting, like like the legal characters in Street Fighter V were just these non-playable characters, B tier is the characters that are like nearly there. They're one or two buffs away from being tournament viable. Like these characters are pretty solid, but they just don't compare to the characters in A tier and such. So first up, we have Mars. Mars, you can kind of tell, was intended to be the weakest of the dolls, but even with that, I don't think she's that bad. She has 800 health and 800 stun, which is better than a lot of non-playable characters, but is the lowest out of all of the dolls. Typically, the dolls just have like Season 1 cami normals, which are very good by non-playable character standards, and Mars just has like nerfed versions of them. She doesn't have any of Kami's command normals, and her standing medium punch is only plus 5 on hit. However, these are still pretty good normals, there's no getting around that. Having access to Kami normals also gives her a consistent anti-air and heavy kick. I know in Street Fighter V this is not the best anti-air in the world, but, you know, by the standards of the non-playable characters, this shit is great. She has this laptop special move, and it's decent. All of them knock down, the light version is safe at minus 3 on block with a bit of pushback, heavy is a minus 8 on block overhead, and the EX version is very interesting. It's got the most reach out of all of them, meaning it can combo after two normals on the ground, which is great, but it's also a frame 13 overhead. Now, in my book, that's unreactable, but like I'm the kind of person who would get thrown today and try to tech it tomorrow, so, you know, take that for what you will. Now, that that's nice and all, but at the end of the day, I don't think she's that amazing of a character. Laptop is a cool move, but it's not the best. It has range issues, so it's not great in whiff punishes, she typically just has to go for sweep, and while she does have some decent mix, it's not the safest mix. EX Laptop is minus 13 on block, and her sweep is minus 7, but a lot of characters can punish that, especially the other dolls. Overall, Mars is solid, but she's not much more than that. Next in B tier, we have April, and while Mars was kind of designed to be weaker than the other dolls, I think April is just genuinely kind of unfortunate. Her normals are overall a bit better than Mars, but she's only got one special move, and it's this poison shot. Poison? Poison. Yeah, poison. Poison shot is not great at anything. It does a lot of things, but I just don't think it's doing any of them that well. It's not the best projectile, so it's not amazing for zoning. And while if spaced, it's very, very plus on block and hit, it's hard to really use as a pressure tool. If you space it out far enough after a heavy punch where it'll be plus on block, then it's nowhere close to a true frame trap. The opponent can just jump out or mash. And if she's close enough to you where it is a frame trap, then she's typically going to be minus after the poison shot, so her pressure just kind of ends. This character has some cool ideas, but overall she's just kind of fake. You'd think she has really high combo damage, because she gets these really cool OTG combos with poison shot after sweep, but none of them are true unless you get a crush counter sweep, so they're kind of pointless. Also, one thing that's genuinely unfortunate is that EX Poison Shot is amazing. It activates poison even on block, and you can combo into it, but for some reason, she can only use it once per round, which just kind of really sucks. It's a very strange limitation, and if she didn't have it, I think she might be able to work her way into A tier, but as it stands, April can do a lot of things, but I don't think she does any of them that well, which is unfortunate. She's a pretty cool character. Rounding out B tier, we have ASR EX, who I have talked about a lot, and if you know why I've talked about him a lot, I'll get to that. It's a pretty big issue. However, he does have some great traits. His frame data on hit is really good, he's got quite good linking ability, and his dive kick, while it's his only special move and there's no EX variation, is a really, really good move. The light and medium versions are at worst minus 3 on block and can be spaced to be plus. Also, on hit, they always give really high frame advantage, which is really nice. They're kind of awkward for a lot of characters to anti-air too. Heavy Dive Kick does so much for the character. It's a good reversal because it has frame 1 armor, it's a great anti-air because it's also just got great hitboxes on top of the armor, and it's also just a really good combo ender. Also, while they've only got that one special move, they have a really good target combo in Medium Kick Heavy Kick. It's only minus 5 on block, and on hit it gives a knockdown with great Oki. 
So overall, this character sounds pretty solid, even if they don't have that big of a toolkit. However, this character's got some really, really strange downsides. You might have noticed that he's got 1,500 health again, and while that seems great, it's balanced out by some massive downsides. ASR EX takes 3 extra frames of hit stun from light normals, and 2 extra frames of hit stun from most other normals. This means that a lot of the cast gets access to unique, more damaging combos versus him, and there's one other non-playable character who actually gets an infinite in the corner versus him, which is very unfortunate. You might not think that's a massive deal because of how much health he has, but there's another downside to balance that out too. After the first hit of a combo, ASR EX will take double damage, which effectively nullifies his massive health pool. ASR EX has a ton of health, but it doesn't really feel like it unless you're just taking a lot of individual hits. ASR EX on paper is a really solid character, but his unique downsides are really, really impactful, and because of that, I think he sits at the very top of B tier. We're getting into A tier now, and I've separated A tier into A- and A+. The reason for that is that, again, in a hypothetical tournament setting, I think all of these characters would be viable, but I still think there's a gap between them. I think three of them are distinctly lower than the other three. Anyways, we're gonna move on to Fevrier. Fevrier is a mostly basic character, she's pretty solid. She's got 900 health, 900 stun, season 1 cami normals. Uh, she's got a very good combo ender and gunshot, and she's got this neat little cross-up move that's only minus 2 on block. If that was it, she'd probably be B tier, but what really sets her apart from the characters in B tier is EX Gunshot. This move is incredible. It's an extremely fast 160 damage launcher that not only combos into Light Gunshot, but into itself. While a lot of non-playable characters struggle to reach 300 damage, Fevrier can easily break 400 with two bars. She's also got some of the best light confirms out of any of the dolls thanks to EX Gunshot speed, meaning she can nearly touch 300 off a light confirm, which is incredible. Now this is great, but I still think she's at the very bottom of A tier, and the main reason for that is... The main thing that makes this character so good is her 2 bar damage. And obviously, you're not always gonna have 2 bars. Her 1 bar damage is still very good, but compared to some of the other dolls, it's just fine. And if she doesn't have any meter, then she's just pretty solid at best. She's nothing special. Fevrier is still a good character though, so I think she's firmly A- tier. Next in A-, we have a character who I really, really wanted to put in A+, but realistically, I do think they're A-, and that's an arrow. An arrow is really cool. I, I really, really like what an arrow has going on. She's kind of like April, but better. She actually has, like, decent corner pressure thanks to microphone. If it's space, then it's plus on block, and while it is minus two point blank, if they mash and they get counter hit, they just fucking die. They eat like 350 damage meterlessly. Mike is a really unique and really fun special move. Speaking of unique, you've got EX Microphone. EX Microphone only combos after Crush Counter Heavy Kick, but what sets it apart from other special moves is the fact it does 1000 stun. So yeah, don't, don't press shit in neutral. She's got a lot of other unique traits too. For some reason, she's got a lot of Kareem's normals. She has Kareen's medium kick as forward medium kick, which is cancelable, which is really good for her pressure. And she's also got this launcher, which funnily enough is up medium punch. She's also got a target combo into the launcher, medium punch, medium punch. And it's really good because it's minus three on block with pushback, so you've just got a safe launcher. Also, that infinite I mentioned earlier against ASR EX, Enero is the one who gets it. As cool as I think an arrow is, it's undeniable that she's got some problems. She doesn't get any kind of combo off her lights, she's very weak to reversals while not having one of her own, which is unfortunate because a lot of the characters above her do have one. Her mid-screen damage is just alright, and while Microphone is a great tool, it's not that fast, so it can be interrupted. An arrow is a really, really cool character who, in a hypothetical tournament setting, I would probably play. I think she's really cool, although I do still think she's only A-. Rounding out A- tier, we have Santamu. Santamu has a ton of great traits. She probably has the best zoning out of any of the non-playable characters, mainly thanks to Light Spear. Light Spear is a very rewarding and very fast projectile, it's honestly great. Medium Spear is a lot slower, but it's much better on block. 
She has a Meedless Frame 1 Invincible DP and an amazing combo ender in EX Spear, which has amazing range thanks to her vacuum effect. It's also got great damage and leaves the opponent at a really nice distance for setting up her zoning. I think her best trait though is probably her unique target combo. A lot of the dolls have Kami's usual back medium punch heavy kick target combo. Santamu has light kick into heavy kick. In my opinion, this is a significant improvement, giving her amazing light confirms and whiff punish potential. I will admit though that if she can't go into target combo, her combo ability isn't the best. She typically has to go into EX Spear, and she doesn't have any meaderless options. Her only other big issue in my opinion is the fact that throwing a spear moves her forward. Medium Spear would be significantly better if it didn't move you forward so much, because while it gives you a combo on hit and is only minus 3 on block, because you're moving forward, any character with a 3-framer is pretty much guaranteed to punish you, so that's kind of unfortunate. That being said, I think she's still a great character, so she's going at the very top of A- tier. Starting off A plus tier, we've got Julie. Julie is just a super well-rounded character. She's got really good normals, really good whiff punish potential, really good linking ability. She's got a frame 1 invincible meaderless DP. She's got a command overhead that's only minus 3 on block. And her arrow is a really useful and versatile special move. Light is really fast and can be spaced to be only minus 5 on block. Medium is your typical combo ender. Heavy is very safe and if spaced just right gives a juggle to light arrow. And EX does very high damage at the cost of being a little awkward to combo into. Only being able to juggle after a target combo. Her main weakness in my opinion is the fact that her light confirms are kind of wonky. None of her lights are cancelable, so all she has is crouching light punch into her target combo into whatever. Which is unideal, but with all that said, I still think she's a great character. The Capri is a character I was initially pretty skeptical on, but the more I messed around with her and the more thought I gave it, I think she's pretty great, particularly in the context of these other non-playable characters. Sting is a fantastic move. It's a great combo ender, it's a pretty solid anti-air, and EX Sting is a frame 1 invincible reversal that for some reason is actually really safe if they stand block it. Her normals have slightly more range than the other dolls, which gives her excellent neutral and fantastic linking ability, and while she lacks a cancelable heavy, she does have an amazing move in forward heavy kick. Pretty much the same as Kami's, except it's only 0 on block, and it leads to a full combo on hit. It's a really, really good move that bullies a lot of characters below her. The Capri's main selling point though is her scramble mix-ups. Originally, I didn't think these were all that great, but you gotta remember that if you're fighting other non-playable characters, I think a lot of characters would really struggle to deal with this. Light Scramble is completely useless, it's this shitty little command dash, but Medium and Heavy are command jumps that you get a ton of options off. She's got a fast fall, a dive kick that's at worst minus 2 on block, an unsafe overhead that launches into an air throw, and she can also just do her normal jump ins. There's a ton that she can do with Scramble, and I think a lot of the other non-playable characters would really struggle to deal with it, especially the ones that don't have a DP. That being said though, when your best trade is a mix-up, that's undeniably kind of risky, and she has lower health and stun than some of the other dolls. Also, she's got the same issue as Julie, where her light confirms are a bit wonky. She either needs meter to go from light kick into EX sting, or she has to do the crouching light punch into target combo thing. That being said, the Capri is still great. Rounding out A tier, we have Setsuki, and while I'm not entirely sure if she's the best of the dolls, I think she's definitely got the most potential. Unlike the others, who mainly have Season 1 Kami normals, she's got a mix of Kami and Laura normals, and I think overall that works out in her favour. Having access to Laura's Heavy Punch gives her great linking ability, having access to her Crouch Heavy Punch gives her a Crumple Crush counter, which none of the other dolls have, and most importantly, instead of having the typical back medium punch heavy kick target combo, she has Laura's medium kick into heavy kick as a target combo, which overall is much better because it's way easier to link into and gives her some very damaging combos. What really sets her apart from the other dolls though are her special moves. She's got this slide, and it's great, there's not a lot to say about it. It's very fast at frame 10 so it combos off anything, it hits low, you can space it to be pretty safe around minus 5, and it even hits OTG, although I'm not entirely sure how practical that is. The really interesting move though is her sword. Light sword is a decent poke, it's minus 3 on block, 
Medium is your main combo ender after target combo, but Heavy and EX are really interesting because they're both crush counters. Heavy Sword is minus 10 on block, but on crush counter it does 300 damage and 250 stun. EX Sword is much more unsafe, being minus 18 and crush counter punishable, but on crush counter it does 400 damage and 350 stun, which is kind of ridiculous. Street Fighter V doesn't really have anything like this, so it's kind of hard to call how good this would be, but I think it's potentially great. It gives her a lot of comeback potential. However, while Slide and Sword are great tools, they do carry a lot of risk. Slide is very unsafe if you don't space it right, and Sword is the same story. Also, a lot of characters can DP EX Sword on reaction, which kind of sucks. Speaking of DP, Satsuki doesn't have one, which is something a lot of the better non-playable characters have. She's also got this kind of useless somersault command grab move. It's kind of sad that it's useless because it looks cool, but it only grabs standing opponents and it's on a character without an overhead, so it's not that threatening. It's really just for style, I guess. Satsuki has a ton of potential, and even though I'm not entirely sure if she's the best character in A tier, I think she's definitely the most interesting. Now, throughout this video, I've kind of mentioned the idea of like a hypothetical tournament setting, right? Where only these non-playable characters are allowed. Now, if you had that, there's one character that I think you should probably ban, and it's this guy, the sole character in S tier, ASMEX. ASMEX just kind of has everything. They have amazing frame data. Pretty much any hit they get can lead into a combo, They've got a massive cancelable 4-framer in Standing Light Kick. All versions of DP are invincible on frame 1, and all of their specials in general have armor on frame 1. And on top of having armor, when he does armor something, he takes 25% less damage. He's got plus on block overhead hitting dive kicks that give a juggle to DP. They've also got a very fast slide for a sweep that, on top of being very fast, is extremely safe. You can space it to be plus, and if you do it immediately after a tackle, it's zero on block on quick rise, and plus five after a back rise, which is just insane. Now to keep him in check, he does share some of ASREX's downsides, but he has less severe versions of them. He takes two extra frames of hit stun from light normals, and then one extra frame of hit stun from a bunch of other stuff, as opposed to three frames and two frames like ASREX. And instead of double damage, he takes 50% more damage after the first hit of a combo. Unlike ASREX, I think his 1500 health actually makes up for these downsides. He does have a few genuine issues as a character. His stun is quite low, he's only got 650. And to be fair, his damage is on the lower side, even though he's very good at getting that damage in the first place. ASMEX is ridiculous. He's easily the best out of the non-playable characters, and again, if you hypothetically had some kind of tournament with these guys, I think he's probably got a goal. He's just a bit too good. So there you have it. That's my personal tier list for the non-playable characters in Street Fighter V. This took a pretty long time to do, mainly because I'm back at college now, so it's a little trickier to work on stuff. But on the bright side, I had to record this video in two parts, and the second part was like a week after the first part, and I didn't change my mind on any of this, so... That's probably a good thing. Uh, of course, this is completely pointless in practice because, you know, they're non-playable characters, you can't play as them, but I don't care. I think it's fun to talk about. So either way, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time, whenever that is. Also, thank you very much for 30,000 subscribers. That is very cool. It means a lot, and I don't, I, I'll keep doing some cool shit, hopefully. Thank you.